Hi everyone, Paul Akers, host of The American Innovator. You know, the innovative spirit is alive and well, and everywhere I travel around the world, I bring back ideas and creativity to share with my audience to continuously improve and change the way we live. Welcome to The American Innovator. Well, welcome back to The American Innovator. You know, I've learned early on that one of the most powerful things to do is become effective at communication. And one of the tools that I use to get better at communication is Google Earth. So today's American Innovator, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm actually going to give you a lesson in how to use Google Earth to actually create a, a show of all the different places that you might visit in the course of your lifetime. Now, you've seen me use this tool a lot. When we went to Africa, I used it. And I'm going to show you how I did that. It's actually incredibly simple, and I'm going to make it simple so you understand how to do it. So let's get started. I'm not going to be able to look at the camera like I am right now through the whole presentation because i got to look at the screen as I show you how to use Google Earth to create a powerful presentation for your travels or whatever you want to do. So let's get started. So first of all, we are on Google Earth right here. We've opened that up, and I'm using a program right now called Camtasia. See down here at the bottom, it says Camtasia 2. I was turned on to this program by Scott Berry, one of our listeners and a good friend of mine. It's an awesome program that allows me to record everything that's going on in my screen. So that's what's happening right now. Now, let me give you a quick overview before we get started so you don't get too overwhelmed. Over here is something called My Places off to the left-hand side in Google Earth. See where it says My Places? Now, I've created a lot of different folders here, but we're going to look at my Africa folder. See it right there, Africa? We're going to click on that and open it up, and when I hit that button right at the top, it check marks all of those. So watch what happens now. Our first stop on our trip to Africa was Dubai. When I click on Dubai, I'll double click on that. Wow, look at that. Takes me right into the city of Dubai and lands me there. But after Dubai, of course, I can zoom in just like this with my mouse. I'm just rolling my cursor and I can see the Burj Khalif right there, the tallest building in the world, about 200 stories tall. But let's say now I want to go to Johannesburg. So go over here to the left hand side and I hit Johannesburg. I double click on that and look at this. It flies me right down to Johannesburg where we landed at the airport. So now I want to show you how I've created all these points. So let's say I want to go into Johannesburg. I'm going to do it a little different. I'm zooming in with my mouse wheel right now. And I go in, and this is the airport we landed at. And this is the view. I'm going to click on Johannesburg one more time. That's the view that I put my place marker. See that pin right there? So let me show you how you make a place marker. So let's say I don't like that view. Let's say I like this view, a little bit wider. I want to see a little bit more Johannesburg, and now I want to tilt it a little bit. So I come over here, and I hit that arrow right there, and now I'm tilting it down so I can see the horizon a little bit. That, to me, maybe looks a little more comfortable and something that I would like to see. So I'm going to zoom in right about there. There's the airport. But now I lost the horizon, so I'm going to go up again, and I'm going to tilt it. There's the horizon right there. And let's say that's the angle that I want to show my viewers of Johannesburg. So then I come up here and I click this little yellow button right there, add a place marker, and I've added one, and I'm going to put it right here, and I'm going to put Paul's. Now I'm going to click here. I'm going to wipe that out there, and I go Paul's new pin, because I'm just showing you how this works. Okay? Now, that's where the new pin is going to be saved. Now, before I say OK, I can move that pin anywhere I want. Just grab it and move it around. Then I say OK, right? So there it is. So now look at the, over here. If you, There was Johannesburg right there. So now I'm going to drag that new pin back up to there. And you see I have Johannesburg. There's the original one right there. That's the original view. And then this is Paul's new pin right there. But let's say I don't like the view that I chose there. Watch how easy this is. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take my little north button right there, and I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to flip it around because I want to look at it from a little different perspective. I don't, I don't like that view. I'm going to come over, and I'm going to say I want to look at it from that view right there. Okay? Then I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. I'm going to come in, and that's the view I want. I want to tilt the angle a little bit right there. Now I'm on, see how it's highlighted, Paul's new pin? So now I right click on that, go down to get information, and these are all the specs right here 
for Paul's new pin. And you notice the, the marker is highlighted now. So now I can move it because I've got that window open. So let's say I want to put it right there. But I want this new view to take over. If I just say OK, it's going to revert back to the original view. So if I click on the View tab and go Snapshot, Current View, Snapshot. So what it's done now is it's remembering this new view right there. So now I push OK. I'll go back to Johannesburg, the original view right there. And let's say I want a new view, Paul's new pin. Look at that. It goes right back to where I want. Then when I want to go to Richards Bay, which was the next place, I just click on that and it takes me right over to Richards Bay and that was the next day on our trip. So here we are in Richards Bay and that was the next day. And then from there we went to the Pinda Forest Lodge. So I'll click on this Pinda Forest Lodge and it takes me up the coast and over to the Pinda Forest Lodge. Now I found the Pinda Forest Lodge. I went in there and I remember there was a watering hole right here that we looked out from the lodge and I remember there was a trail going across here and I zoomed in and I said, oh, yeah, indeed, even though the graphics are not real good here, the satellite shots are not perfect, I was able to identify that as definitely the Pinda Forest Lodge. But let's say, again, I don't like the angle that I'm looking at this. I want to see a little bit of the horizon, so I'm going to go up here. I'm going to tilt it like this until I start to get the mountains into view. Doesn't that look much nicer like that? gives you a little better perspective, so you know where the Pinda Forest Lodge is in relationship to the mountain range right here, because this used to be a big, um, actually the ocean, this is a big sand forest, is what it is now, because the ocean came up against the mountains. So that's the view I want now. So I go up here to Pinda Forest Lodge, and I right click, I go get information, and what's next, you think? View, snapshot view, now I've saved it. Now watch what happens, I'll go to Richards Bay, there's that view. And let's say, well, I won't change that. I'll just go back to Pinda Forest Lodge. And there it is. And now we've got the horizon up here, much nicer view. And then the next day, we found a water monitor over here by this water pond right here. We were driving down this road and we stopped. And then we went over to the airport and James chased a water monitor along here. It was very cool. And then we go over here. We crossed a really deep river. This was really uh, a lot of water here. We had to the Jeep, the water was up to the side of the Jeep, it was crazy. And then we found some giraffes right over here. So do you see how I've mapped out our entire trip on Google Earth? And this was a really cool pond that all the hippos used to hang out at. We, you watch some of our videos, you'll see it. We were sitting in the truck right here. But let's say again, I don't like that view. So all I do is go up here and then that lights up and I'll tilt this down and give a little nicer view. Give a little bit of the horizon, okay, and then I'll pull this out like that, and there is the view that I'm looking for right about there. So you right-click, get info, view, current snapshot, okay, and now I've saved that. So I go to the giraffes. That's where we found the giraffes. Up There's actually a power line right here, and the giraffes were hanging out up here, but then we went over and we saw the hippos and the water bucks right over here. And notice how we have the new view. So I guess at the end of the day, Google Earth is so cool because you can zoom out like this, find a place in the world that you want to show your friends and family. And then here's another cool trick. Look how I have Africa upside down. That's disorienting. You go up here to the north, and you double click or just click it one time, and then it makes everything north up. So now I want to put a pin down here on the tip of Africa. We went down here. We went shark diving, actually, white shark diving right here in this bay. It's pretty cool. So let's say I want to put a marker there. So all I'm going to do is find out approximately where I want to be. I think it was right here, actually. So it was right about here that we went out. So now I'm going to tilt it down, get the view that I want. You can see it's quite mountainous here. Nice mountain range. I get the view that I want. There it is. Ah, oh, look at, see, you can really get a much better perspective of what the tip of South Africa looks like. And I'll tilt it one more time, just kind of positioning it, finding that perfect spot. Tip it like that, bring it in, and this is where we were, right down there. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So then I'll go up here to a place marker, and I'll drag it right down because we got on the boats right around there. And then I'll put sharks right there.
Hopefully I'm spelling everything right. And then we just push OK because it's going to save that current view. We don't have to go view, current view now. We can, but it's not necessary. And then we saved it. And see, there's shark diving now. So watch what happens. I'll go to Nagala, which was way up here, way up north. And there's a Nagala camp right there. Right there was the camp. You can see all the camp area right here. This is the dry riverbed. It was great. That's where we saw all the leopards. It's pretty cool. And now I want to go back to my shark diving spot. So there it goes. It flies back to shark diving right there. Now you notice that flew pretty quick. I'm going to show you a couple other tricks real quick. You go up to Google Earth and you go to Preferences. And now this is our control panel. So Touring. And oh, actually, in navigation, here we go. Fly to speed. There we go. I really was under navigation. I'm sorry. So we want to go back to slow it down. I think 10 is the number that I generally like to work with. About 9 or 10, right there. See that? We'll go apply and OK. Now let's go to Nagala. Nagala. Look how much slower that is. Look how much more comfortable that is when you're creating a tour to show people where you've gone. It's just not quite as disorienting. And it also allows the map to load better. So when it gets there, it's more clear. See how it's much more clear? It didn't come in uh, latently, if you will. So we'll, get, we'll, so we'll go back to shark diving. There you go. See how much nicer that is? Much better. We go past Johannesburg. And of course, if you don't want to have this really zoomed in view right here, you can change all that simply by going like this. You just zoom out. And you want, pe you want people to see the approximation of where you were in South Africa, right? So you, here you go. So Ingala is way up there, and shark diving is way down there. You just want to give people a general idea. You don't want to zoom in like I did. So you go back to shark diving, and you go to get information, view, save the current view, OK. Now let's try it again. Ingala. Okay, so here we go. We're zooming from shark diving back to Angola. Now, see, it's much slower now, and maybe that, that speed is perfect for you. If not, you know how to correct it because I showed you it's in preferences. Now, we're going to go from Angola back to shark diving, and let's see if we're comfortable with that speed. It gets out, zooms way out, gives you the big bird's eye view of Africa where you are, and shark diving comes into view down at the bottom. So that's how you create a folder. I didn't actually show you how to create a folder. Let's do that right now. So you're in My Places. You were, oh, actually, I did show you how in the very beginning, a Google uh, Tour or Google Lesson 101, just you add a folder right there, brings it up. And I'll just put test for this one real quick just to make sure it's clear. We're kind of reviewing. And then away you go. And now that you've got the test, now what you do, you're highlighting the test one, and if you want to create a new place marker, let's say right here by Cape Town, okay, so we'll go right in here by Cape Town, right there, actually, I don't know, that isn't Cape Town, excuse me, I'm not very good at this, am I? Cape Town's right here, got the wrong place, so we go into Cape Town, and I'll just do a real quick one, I'll go ahead and grab a place marker, and Robin Island, actually, there it is, there's Robin Island, I'll put it there. And again, always forgive my spelling because I'm not the best at that. R-O-B-B, Robin Island. Okay, so we got Robin Island in, and we'll say OK. So see what happened under test, that new folder, we got our first place marker. Then, of course, I can collapse these folders just like this. And if I want to take off the pin marks, watch, see where it says Robin Island right there? And I don't want that to show up anymore. I just simply click on that. And it disappears. And when I click on test or click on Robin Island, either one, it re-highlights the pin. So that's how easy it is to create a tour and actually identify all the places you've gone in the world. So as you can see over here, I have all these really cool places I've been. The Bahamas right there. If I open up that folder right there and I click on that, it's going to take me right over to Crooked Island because I've been over there. And it shows all the cool little places that I've been. And you can see all my pins are highlighted up. And if I want to go in to a tight view, I simply click on that. It's going a little slow now. Maybe I might want to speed that up. And it's going to bring me right into Crooked Island at the Bahamas where I flew in my plane. And now notice how it's starting to come into focus. It'll get a little better. And there you can see the runway is right there. And this is where we were hanging out and everything comes into view. And then I can just literally fly everywhere we went in the Bahamas on this trip. 
And you can see my other place markers right there were flying by. And there you go. Pretty cool, isn't it? So this is how you make a tour. Hopefully this American Innovator has been helpful, trying to leverage technology and show you all kinds of cool things you could do because really it's so important to be effective at communicating. And I believe Google Earth and creating a tour is one of those things that everybody should learn how to do. I love doing it and, and life is full of great stories. So we'll see you next week on The American Innovator. If there's anything else I can help you with on this program, let me know and we'll go from there. See you next week. Remember, life's an adventure. Be a part of the solution. Go out, learn, improve, change, think outside the box. We can change the way the world thinks. Be an innovator. I really gotta stop getting myself in these situations. That's a leopard, and that's an elephant. Yes, and this is a cheetah. Like, oh, I saw yeah, that. Kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, cute. He wants to play. Uh oh. Uh oh. You got it.